hopefully this records, but I guess I can do it uh, on there. Let me make sure on YouTube it's going. It's actually a good idea. Yeah. I know on YouTube it does, but I've, I've never used Streamyard, so I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> that would suck if we make the whole video and <laughs> it doesn't record at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Welcome to the INTJ equation to none of my viewers out there. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the long hiatus. I kind of had my own mental health breakdown as I do talk about my own mental health a lot on this video. Um, definitely going to try to stay consistent and pace myself instead of make like 30 videos. Hey, I got a viewer. Thank you. Today, yeah. I am joined by Gabriel or Rafi. He runs a YouTube channel called We Are Unions. He is a BB enthusiast like myself. We are few and far between, it seems like. Um, so definitely, I'll go and put his uh, channel down in the description, We Are Unions. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out. Would you like to tell the people a little bit more about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Gabriel. Uh, I host We Are Young Yens, a YouTube channel um, where I'm teaching typology from my understanding because it seems to be there's so many subjective takes on this uh, particular science, if we can call it that, um, or behavioral understanding of human nature uh, and studying, uh, in, in essence, at its core, what I'm doing is studying consciousness and figuring out the way that consciousness is playing out uh, within each individual, uh, both subjectively and then trying to remain uh, objective to some degree uh, with my new findings and stuff that I'm discovering in typology. Um, and then also breaking down just like the basics of like the MBTI personality um, code and how uh, how to read the code and how to understand people when what to look for when you're watching people, uh, when you're people watching. All right. When did you get into typology? Um, I probably didn't get into it. I was probably a little bit older than you. I think you said you're 26, right? 26, yeah. So what age did you get into it? How long have you been into it? Uh, late 2017. So it's been almost five years, I'd say. Uh, just about. Yeah, I had an INFJ friend of mine introduce me to it. Uh, and then kind of got hooked on it ever since. And I've been kind of doing depth exploration into my own. I've been using myself as the kind of the the guinea pig or the, the, the test subject for developing my understanding of typology. Uh, and yeah, so about five years. Okay. And I, I watched a few of your videos. Uh, again, he has a channel called We Are Union. So go ahead and check that out. I think you have a website too. Yeah, I'm working on the website. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's pretty atrocious. I need to update that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Same. Um, what sources did you start out with? I know you said that you were mistyped as ESFP and uh, I believe an ENFP at one point. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so. I've been typed as an ESTP, as an ESFP, as an ENFP, as an INTP. The INTP was like self-reporting on the test. That's what the test gave me when I initially got into it. Um, uh, but you had asked me what what references, like what sources I was looking into initially. Yeah, like what did your INFJ friend introduce you to? Who was like the go-to? Uh, so, so initially it was C.S. Joseph. Uh, who That's kind of where I got my start with. It seems like a lot of people get their start in that. Um, and then... As I tend to do, he had books that he had recommended I read, which I got into and started reading. And I started realizing there was a lot of intuitive leaps that he was taking with his understanding and a lot of biases that he was falling into. And I realized that like he wasn't a good source. So I no longer of the the experience that I had. And uh, so I, st I started reading all those books that he recommended, BB's book. Uh, he completely wrote off David Kiersey, um, which I started reading and realized it was because he, he in essence, stole David Kiersey's work, um, play, almost bo bordering on plagiarized it. Um, mm. And then that that really led to me having a lot of resentment around him because of that reason. Uh, but then started reading uh, David Kiersey, got into Linda Barron's work and understanding the interaction styles and understanding how people are showing up in reality. And the coolest thing was when I would go out, I would actually be seeing these things play out. Like I would see the informative type. I would see the introverted feeler. Like I was at a club once and I saw this introverted feeling girl get really, really upset. Um, I don't know if she was an F FI dom, but she definitely had introverted feeling because she was really triggered by her boyfriend and her boyfriend just like her, like the FE just following her around, trying to take care of her the entire night at the club um, was, was really entertaining to watch. Um, and just seeing, seeing those patterns play out in people has always been has been really fascinating since I got introduced to the idea. And uh, yeah, and also uh, discovering like the idea behind social engineering. So, you know, social engineering people is like a, a very real thing, uh, like being able to to gain favor with people based on uh, some 
persona that you put up, even though it may not actually be the real you, has always been something that's really fascinating to me because I, I did it fairly, fairly well when I was a little kid. Like I used to, whenever I would see people get pissed off at a person's actions, I would do the opposite actions and I would get a reward uh, from it. Like I would get a good response from the individual that I was trying to social engineer, even though I was like 11 years old. So I didn't know what the fuck social engineering was. It just came like intuitively to, uh, to me. And yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much, I guess, my starting point as well. Um, I actually, like I said, when I was your age, long before CS Joseph got on and started doing his thing. Yeah. I took some online tests. I took I I tested INTJ twice, INTP once, and INFJ. Uh, I kind of looked at descriptions and felt like INTJ fit because I was you know pretty well formed in my uh, personality by then, at late twenties, right. and dismissed it because it's only fifty percent accurate and kind of rediscovered it years later. Right. Um, yeah, CS Joseph. I think the thing I really stopped with me is uh, one. I think he's an ENFP. <laughs> I think yeah. his system is good, but again. You have to kind of type yourself and be honest yeah. with it. Uh, his system, by the way, his system isn't his system. <laughs> just want to put that yeah. out there. His system that's is just a, a Frankenstein of a bunch of different people's ideas. And exactly, that's a TE yeah. thing. Like we don't, yeah. like TEs just aren't really original. They just kind of take a little bit here and take a little bit there and piece it yeah. together. And he's right. just constantly using TEFI. And plus, he tr predicted his. Uh, mm, newborn son in his womb yeah. was an INTJ. I'm like, okay. my, my two month old is a, an INFJ. I can tell. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm analyzing his sperm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that just sounds like the screams TI trickster to me. Right. I had like an ESFPX and uh, just speaking of social engineering, I actually social engineered her. Then I watched the video and didn't realize what I was doing. Yeah. But you know, like again, like I do agree with a lot of what he says. I just don't throw the baby out with the bath water. He, um, yeah, that it's statement right there encapsulates his content perfectly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the social engineering is not all negative. You know, you can kind of social engineer people to kind of guide them in the right steps. And she was kind of falling off the edge and right. going in the deep end. But I kind of, you know, social engineered her without, you know, like I was oblivious to the, the concept at the point uh, at the yeah. time. And. Yeah, yeah the, the, the the idea behind social engineering is that it, it's already being done. Whether you're aware of it or not, it's being done. Even like your unconscious is going to produce an action for you that's going to either create a positive or a negative effect. So if you can have any sort of analysis that's going to give you a positive effect as opposed to a negative, even if it's just your subjectively positive for you and it's negative for another individual, um, it's it's it, it would be strategically advantageous for you to do so, which is like the NT fucking storyline. Anything that gives us a better way to, to strategize is always going to be uh, consumed. Yeah. Uh, right now, the whole community is almost at a split. I think CS, like people like CS Joseph, who are polarizing figures in their right, their own right, and uh, who's that other guy? The the uh, Eric typing Eric, with famous talking people. With fam yeah, talking with famous people, Eric uh, Strauss, yeah. I think. Or yeah, the people who just are controversial, just for controversy for controversy sake basically get yeah. views uh yeah it stirs up the algorithm yeah no. so what do you see the the community as or i guess clans of warring tribes fighting one another is kind of the way i see it that's funny um, yeah that's a, <laughs> we're resorting back to our tribalist nature <laughs> where do you it, see it, it in the future like where do you see uh how it all comes together um that's an interesting question i i'm optimistic that it's all going to kind of play out there's just going to be a lot of chaos just like with any any new system that's being introduced uh throughout the the integration process uh, because there's one one of the interesting things with with the community is the, the question of like people being mistyped and other people saying that that individual is mistyped uh and calling them out on it and then that creating a lot of inner turmoil in the individual that's being called out and a lot of turmoil for the other individuals that are watching this because they are now having to restructure their entire understanding of said personality type uh but what people and this is this is something it really frustrates me as a as i would i would assume to be as a ti user even though some people don't think that i'm a ti user uh is i i'm watching this and very quickly i'm recognizing that when when you say intj you instantly associate intj with se inferior but the term se inferior the definitions that are applied to SE inferior is where it actually changes. So when you say SE or when you say INTJ and when I say INTJ, it, we could be we probably aren't because we've read similar material and we have similar ideals towards our understanding of typology. At least I would assume I'm presuming that because, you know, we'll get into that in the video if, if you're interested in talking about that. 
Um, but other people don't have that. They may have gotten a completely, they may just only have socionics in their head and their socionics understanding of that term is going to be entirely different, especially socionics because they, they change the judging type and the perceiving type. So INTJ is actually an INT INTP in their, their system. So, yeah, so as far as where it's headed, it's just, uh, it's like I said, ultimately optimistic, but there's going to be a lot of, a lot of turmoil in the process of all this pe all, all people bumping their heads, especially that as the, the TI tricksters jump on board and they try to develop their understanding of it, they're going to be understanding everything convoluted and, and backwards as opposed to the proper way. And it's going to create a, you know, John BB talks about the, the tricksters double bind, uh, tendency and how it ties you up, but it also ties other people up. It's like, we're having to drag ass and like pull the ti tricksters uh, uh, on board and be like look this is the right way to do it this is the right way to do it and it's going to take a, a really long time for that to actually to actually occur and that's just my perception of it I, I don't know if my guesses are right we'll we'll see it may just be that this all goes up in a flame and then it completely uh, dies out in a, in a couple of years when a new system comes up Okay, I think these are some questions that you put. When you're out and about, what do your conversations usually steer towards? Yeah, I, that, that was more so me. As, I was curious for you, um, although I know you're, you have your hermit lifestyle that you live at times. Just like what, what, what kinds of conversation topics are you usually bringing up for people if you're bringing up for the, the conversation topics for people? Or if you usually just keep to yourself? Or... Well, as I shared before in this video, I do have avoidant personality disorder, and I'm slowly yeah. trying to come out of it, and I kind of relapsed recently. Uh the only few people I talk to in uh, in real world, I guess you could say, is this uh, INTP chick. I don't think she's really in a typology. I haven't really brought it up with her yet. Yeah. Uh, and my son's mom, who's an ESFP. And just uh, really, I don't, I have a hard time finding people to talk to and relate to. But uh, gotcha. Yeah. I just, that must really be fun hate... as an INTJ. <laughs> yeah. The FE trickster in you. Yeah. Uh, so it's just, kind of hard to find people to relate to and small talk is agonizingly dull and painful for me. So I yeah, just, uh, yeah. just do, regular include a banter, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, f I feel for you. I've, it's interesting because like I, I'm an extrovert, but I've had my own struggles with, I, I don't, I, I don't really pay too much attention to like the, the, the terminology of uh, personality disorders and all that sort of stuff. Cause I feel like all that stuff is very, very, uh, uh, it, it, for a lot of people, it's very defining. Some people take on the term and then they think that like that's kind of like their, their life is going to now play out in this storyline and they they can't get out of that storyline. Um, I've noticed that, especially with like FI DOMs, I have noticed that there's an ISFP uh, friend who got the BPD labeling who then got stuck um, uh, just experiencing the, the, uh, the, the abandonment that's associated with having BPD. Um, and like it, it creates a lot of turmoil in them. But uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Um, I think for like NI DOMS, I know INFJs kind of had this too. It's kind of like if you're diagnosed with a type of cancer, you kind of know what type of cancer you have. So you know how to combat it. Right. Like with AVPD, the avoidant personality disorder for me, it was like, I'm trapped in this prison, but at least I know where the location is and how I can escape this prison. Now I know kind of like, right. like look up the tools and find resources and like, so it gives you a, a mental wall to kind of lean on. So whenever you're like, oh, I'm, I'm falling into that wall again, that's the avoidant wall. And now I can kind of bounce back into whatever the, the I guess, appropriate wall would be to like be be more uh, this other way. Is that what you're kind of doing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I know like diagnoses aren't important. I'm not a big fan of the DSM-5. I think it's just a, a billing guide is all it really is because I've worked in the industry with behavioral health. Yeah. But, you know, I think uh, people like, it's underdiagnosed in this case, and it's a di very different from a, like a generalized anxiety disorder or social anxiety disorder. It's just always on and never goes off. And gotcha. Find ways to combat it, basically. I guess give a give the enemy a name. <clears throat> right. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I because I'm because of the line of work that I'm in and the stuff that I'm studying, I tend to default to trying to figure out the the Jungian terminology of what's going on in the background uh, and seeing. Because at the end of the day, the whole goal with this is being able to actually help people and like figuring out if somebody has avoided personality disorder, figuring out what in their life is, what sort of archetypal complexes are they getting stuck in that's causing such turmoil? And is there an answer based on that archetypal complex that they are stuck in and how they can get out of it? Um, and that's kind of what what uh, I'm, I'm watching for and looking for. And I'm really young, so I don't have a lot of experience, unfortunately. Uh, so that's I'm excited to see what I'm like at 40 after being, in essence, a becoming a a, a true pure a Jungian. 
uh, analyst, not not literally, not not illegally, a Jungian analyst, but basically, I ha having read all the material, I will at some point be be able to to call, call myself that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm approaching forty, and uh, I guess I don't know what I look like yet either. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what do you mean exactly by FE FI trickster examples value assessment swings? Yeah, so I guess. what what do you characterize as as the feeling function? What is it at its core? If you can, do you, do you utilize BB's model of the? Uh, let me see it here. I think it's the, the FI is assessing the establishing the value, appraising and judging, and FE is validating, affirming, and relating to individuals. Um, I think that's a good broad uh, broad way of looking at it. I guess I think it. Mm -hmm. I think it's very specific on what fun what the cognitive attitudes, like what archetype it falls in, like the hero, the nemesis, the right. inferior. I think it, uh, I think it, it greatly varies with person and type. And, you know, I think typology is the skeletal system of the human body. And a lot of people think like, well, you're just trying to put me in a box. I think this, you know, this is like, this is what supports you. This is the building box of your personality. It does not necessarily, you still have like your nervous system, your digestive system and all this, but right. it's like the yeah, frame you, you, of you, it. You can't do chiropractic work on a spine unless you know where the spine is, kind of thing. Yeah, and like you know, you got to realize the you have the spinal cord and you have it going up to your your brain, and you know, yeah, it's a big okay. intricate system and it's very specific and very varying. Okay. I guess. Gotcha. So I guess to answer your question, I can kind of give a a broad overview of what I am experiencing internally whenever I'm having my FI trickster problems. Um, so. With FI Trickster, uh, at its core, the way that I view the um, the feeling function is that it is a value. They're, they're both value assessment functions. It's just that one's applied to the objective world, meaning other people, and one's applied to the, sub the subject. So like that individual in particular. Um, and with introverted feeling as a trickster function, because I'm naturally like, I'm, I'm in essence, like the FE doms and the FE child, it's not too far apart. Uh, mind you, I'm just not as good at it and I can't do it for as long because it is fairly exhausting. Like, when people come to me at events, I'm like, uh, depending on who it is, I'll, I'll put up with it for a little bit. But eventually I'm like, I fucking can't. I'm fucking done, bro. Like you're, you're fucking draining me and I'll have my what I call the value assessment swing where I now start to think and become riddled with the idea that the individual is taking advantage of me in some way. Because I just I don't have a a good way of assessing uh, like who's who's getting more out of a situation uh and who who's getting less and because i'm not naturally focused on that there are times where that swing comes out and it's not all the time like i'm when i'm in a healthy state there's no i have no problem with that it's just when i'm in my most unhealthy where that stuff seems to come up and i was curious on your take on uh if we could apply that subject object model to it to how, how that would uh how that would play out for you if you even notice that or maybe it would have to be a conversation we have at a later date when you apply more analysis to yourself and your situation when you're at your most unhealthy I don't know well, if that, when made, I'm, that made sense. <laughs> at my most, most unhealthy, I have a lot of nurture factors to my my case, I think, with the avoidant personality. So I think that kind of exacerbates FE trickster. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll definitely, I, I lack social skills, so I'll say something very brash and upsetting to people, as most mm -hmm. INTJs struggle with. And I have no clue that, you know, I just think I'm telling the truth, you know. Right. And if somebody... If I was screwing up or doing something like that, I would expect somebody to call me on my own shit. Like that's what I appreciate INT or ENTPs for, because you know they'll call you out, right? But and just like social situations, like I don't have any social awareness. Like if there's something I haven't experienced yet personally, I may like just be clueless, like where to go, and like if a woman's flirting with me or anything like that, you know. And it kind of ties it. I, I think like a lot of people misconstrue the functions as it's just one function at a time. I think it's like a chord, like playing a guitar. You're using several right. functions at a time and occasionally your finger's in the wrong fret or whatever and it sounds like shit. That's kind of like, right. I think we're, the shadow functions come to play. Like oh, I'm using my FI and my NI and my TE, but I'm also, oh, there's a there's FE trickster there. And blah, 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 you know. Basically. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So w is that where you kind of put the idea of like the shadow defenses coming in? Yeah. Like it's, it's trickster and it pops you out. Like, you know, yeah. it's the, the nature of the trickster archetypal function in itself. That's just how it is. It plays tricks on you basically like, Oh, like you're in a social situation and you want to talk to this girl or whatever. And Oh, nope, you're not doing that. Your foot's going in your mouth. 
Right. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. And how, so how do you see it? So, so with your introverted feeling child, how, is, is that kind of like where you, you're, you're naturally assessing what it is that something <clears throat> is valuable in terms of how it can benefit you? Yeah. I mean, I kind of have my own moralistic stand, standoff ground ish, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't even make any damn sense. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <clears throat> like, like, you know, like the FB has like the values of everybody, the collective and stuff like that. And right. Right. We're putting more emphasis on other people's wants. Everybody's just agreeing basically just for the sake of harmony. And I'm kind of like, that's, that's stupid. You know, I don't agree with that. And right. I kind of like, not that I think that I'm really better than everybody. It's just, I think morally what they're doing is wrong or incorrect, or they're just doing it just to, just to be popular or just to fit in that, that kind of, I think that goes in with my SI demon because SI and FE are definitely the, the people functions, I think. Right. Yeah. So, and kind of lacking both of them. It's, it's just kind of tough, I think. And Interesting. with conversating with people, I guess, conversing with people. Right. So how does that fit in? Do you just like, don't you have like your own moral stand ground and you're like, and everybody's just kind of going with the flow with their own FE whole ethical uh, thing and you're like you don't see anything that's wrong with it you're like yeah whatever just go with it yeah like since, since i was a little kid i've never really had like i th and this is why like i i had a this is where my own value swings came in uh where i was so incorrectly assessing the value when i was younger because my values almost always came from other people so i never really i never really liked anything so like if i was around friends and they wanted to take on uh bow hunting i would be like oh fuck yeah i love bow hunting and i would fucking get into it and i'd be like go into debt just to get into bow hunting not realizing that like that's not the right fucking thing to do um and then that turned into when, when i would run into people that were morally corrupt that would create a lot of problems for me too because i would take on their value structure as well where i would then start doing things that weren't uh legal uh, and fortunately I stopped before I turned 18 cause I realized I didn't want to go to prison. Um, and I kind of had a, a rude wake up call. Um, uh, but when I was like 15 or 16, I was like hacking kids and like figuring out, uh, I played a video game called RuneScape, uh, and I would steal kids accounts and I would sell their gold to like, and, and I would sell it for like real currency to like profit. And I was making like $3,000 a week at, at some point, just cause I was, I was hacking so many kids accounts. Um, and I got into like a really good flow. Um, and, and in realizing that, like, I didn't actually pick up that value structure for myself that came from someone that hacked me, who then introduced me into the idea, because I think he saw the natural uh, progression or, or the natural tendency that I had to, to social engineer. Like, I, 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 in essence, social engineered him into teaching me everything that he knew uh, for the sake of curiosity. But then I picked up on his value structure. So it kind of ended up biting me in the ass, uh, all, all the stuff that I learned from him. And it, and it got me into more trouble. Um, and then my mom found out and I slowly but surely picked up on her value structure, realizing that that was wrong. And then that's kind of where that, uh, turned into a more, a more positive lesson. And I haven't fortunately done that since. So, uh, I lost my train of thought here. So you're kind of like just going with the flow then. And if you don't have that almost like a parent figure, like a positive figure, you, you didn't realize like that was a bad thing. Like that was wrong. Yeah. Or, like or if I'm you... around bad people, I can become a bad person. And if I'm around good people, I can become a good person. It's like my, my value structure is very easily influenced by the external world. And that's kind of where the extroverted feeling function comes in, at least from the understanding that I've developed so far. But do you uh, know that you're doing wrong? Do you, did you know that was like illegal and morally wrong? Or were you just like didn't think about it kind of like in an inferior type of way? In hindsight, take I took a really uh, large psilocybin uh, mushroom trip, and I realized like all the wrong that I was doing to people. I, I think I, like I had to face my own trickster um, through that that psilocybin trip. Uh, but in in the moment, no, like I, that's never my because my my natural tendency is to figure out like I just want to figure out how shit works. Mm -hmm. It's like hacking software and this hacking software to then hack this individual the objective is complete. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I fucking did it. And I was able to figure it out. And the individual that I was around, cause like my mom, my dad passed away when I was really young and my mom was working a lot of jobs. So I spent a lot of time by myself on my computer. Uh, and like the people that I was socialized with online were other kids that were all just like fucking, they were part of the hacking community and they were just all like morally corrupt pieces of shit uh, at the end of the day. And that's kind of what, what led to that. 
And I think when you're virtual and you're not seeing the actual person and looking at them and talking to them, you kind of forget that you're doing this to people too. Yeah, that was another another big aspect of it too. Yeah, that I had to again face. I, I faced it very strongly when I took that uh that psilocybin trip. That was a really, really monumental mental shift that I had. And then ever since then, I've kind of like whenever I'm doing things and if I'm making decisions and if I'm struggling with moral decisions, uh, I'll either like recently when I was uh, I, I told you before we were recording the uh, INTJ business partner that I had to cut out. Uh, I went and I started reading. Uh, I think it's uh, Aristotle's. He, he has a book on uh, on this idea of friendship and the importance of friendship. And uh, I was trying to pick up on his I, I didn't realize at the time, but I was trying to pick up on his moral stances on what I should do in this situation. Um, and then I'll either do that or I'll default to uh, what my I start to think what my mom would do in this situation and trying to pick up on her moral her, her moral compass because I just do not have my own. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate. What type is your mom? That's a good question. Um, I think she's an ESFJ, uh, although I don't know for certain. Um, I'm sorry, not an ESFJ. I think she's an ESFP, um, but again, I, I don't know for certain because I haven't really put too much emphasis in typing her. Uh, I tend to to separate my my type stuff from from them. And it, there's also the issue: my mom doesn't speak English, uh, and my Spanish vocabulary is very very poor. So I've never applied a Jungian lens to to my mom because of that reason. I know my brother's an ENFJ, uh, but when I because my Spanish, I, I basically have like a second grader's uh, Spanish vocabulary. Uh, so being able to understand what she's saying and then apply it to a Jungian lens is is uh, really difficult for me. I find I might get I might try it better and get better at it at a later date. But my my best guess is that she's an ESFP from what I can tell because she she does display a lot of FI, um, and she. Um, when my, my father passed away, she kind of like picked up on making sure that we had everything that we needed. And she would like, she, she, she displays very much starter type tendencies uh, where she, she had like a lot of different jobs and she, she had started her own businesses uh, when we were growing up. Mind you, she, she came to this country like in her late thirties. So she didn't have a lot of opportunity, uh, but like little businesses, like selling like used cell phones and stuff at like shopping malls and all sorts of other stuff. Well, anything that would help her make ends meet basically. How'd you communicate so my best with your mom? Cause she, if you spoke different languages, um, very surface level. Uh, so I, as I've gotten older now, I've, uh, kind of introduced her to the idea. Like there was a lot going, she, she had no idea all the stuff that I was doing. She never knew that I was hacking. She never knew that any of the stuff that was going on, uh, because she was just so busy working. Um, so when we would communicate, it was almost always surface level and it, it really, uh, hurt me in a lot of ways. Cause like, there was so much depth to my personality that my mom wasn't experiencing that. Like it kind of created a lot of inner, tor inner turmoil in myself uh, because of that, which was really frustrating. I mean, just being immersed in it as a toddler and a baby, you think you would learn Spanish just by hearing her. You didn't pick that up. And uh, yeah, it's like I said, I spent so much time by myself on my computer. Like I, no. I spent like the majority of my upbringing was I, I always joke that I was raised by YouTube. Cause like everything that I know is because of YouTube more so than it is because of my mom, uh, oh. because of that reason. Yeah. So there wasn't, there was never, there was never really a, 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 a deep, deep conversations that I would have with my mom. And I think it's also just because of her, her, her sensing, sensing preference, like the stuff that I found interesting, she never really, uh, took to like, she never, she didn't, she wanted to just like talk about my day and like what I was doing. Whereas I was trying to like figure out like how to, how to, use this trojan horse to like be able to hack this dude's account and 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 that was like the primary interest that i had i was just like chasing dopamine in essence interesting case it's unfortunate though i'm sorry yeah i mean it is it's the cards i was dealt is the way that i view it and kind of just figure out how to use those cards to to the best of your ability the next question you asked which i don't really understand either the the, the destroyed family nucleus and importance of all functions developed is that like the individuation is that what you mean yeah um so th that's a very subjective experience that i had because like my own family uh when my dad passed away the family kind of started to fall apart because it was you know how like there's always that one person that's like holding everything together for a lot of people um that was kind of the experience that i had and i realized at a certain point uh all the stuff that i didn't want to do like the si work the 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 f developing my own fi principles all that sort of stuff is stuff that i had to go off on my own to figure that stuff out and I was more so I was curious if you had any any uh, experience with that and like figuring out the 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 realization that you have to now utilize more functions. It's almost like society demands it more so now than it did at some at some point in the past.
Yeah, I think I definitely had the case. Like my my dad left when I was little, but I had a stepdad and my my mom, my step uh, my mom. But I never communicated well with them or they never communicated well with me. I was a kid, of course. But uh, right. yeah, I kind of just had to figure things out for myself. And they kept me isolated for their own, I think, narcissistic control reasons, really. Yeah. And I really didn't get to grow as a person. So I came very one sided, as Young would say. So I kind of had right. to still am just kind of figuring things out. And once you don't get that early foundation, that early basis of bonding with your Especially your mom, that's very important. Maternal yeah. bonding. Just you kind of don't grasp it. And it's kind of you're kind of like an outcast, I guess. So yeah, right. I'm just trying to individuate all the functions and I think typology and really learning deep into it and not the surface level Reddit yeah. memes is been very beneficial for me. Yeah. And a big part for you, I would imagine, is also like learning about other people. So that like you can put emphasis on actually being there for other people and understanding them and kind of not being so quick to to write them off as I would assume people with uh, avoidant personality disorder tend to do, um, especially with the uh, your 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 TI critic your your Senex function, I'm sure is not a is not a a joy to to deal with for other people. For for me, I personally don't mind it just because I I really don't get offended by much. It takes a lot to offend me. Yeah, I mean, I think that more of the introverted functions are well, they're introverted, they're internal, like the TI critic for me, the Senex, whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. Like, I think that I'm stupid. I grew up thinking again, like, I was really stupid, even though I had extraordinary low self-esteem growing up because of my upbringing and all that. But kind of like I'm not good enough or smart enough to do these things. And I think that's kind of how it, it kicks me. Or even like, I think it's it's kind of like, it's like a trickster in itself almost. It's like, yeah, I think I'm right about something and I don't check it and I'm adamant about being right. And I end up being wrong. And I look stupid or I look like an asshole for it. So interesting so yeah it's kind of like a double-edged sword i guess yeah i, I always joke that the the, the senex function is where where our teeth come out where we tend to to lash out at people it's interesting for you for me it, it shows it shows up in me I, i'm very quick to dismiss other people like anytime their ideas come up i'm kind of like my my knee-jerk reaction is they're an idiot like they don't know what they're talking about because i'm just mm -hmm. such a sophisticated youngin and i know so much more than them uh but over the years i've learned to have to keep that in check like that's just my own archetypal complex taking over and and just dismissing these people when they may actually have something of value to say um and it's just it, it's literally just mm -hmm. time and repetition is the only thing that seems to actually work to counter that that's the bad thing about psychology in general, not just typology. It's all very subjective. There's nothing very concrete about it. It's all, it's not like you cut open somebody's brain. Oh, that's what's causing your schizophrenia. You're cured. You know, it's right. Oh, here's your, no your Senex function. <laughs> yeah. There's, right. there's no blood test you can detect. There's nothing like that. It's just all woo woo Man. and ethereal. And they have SJs making the DSM 5 and trying to make it uh, concrete, but it just isn't right. concrete. We don't like, they really don't know what they're talking about they just kind of pretend they do right and they can't even see their own blindsidedness it seems yeah, like. yeah I, I did an interview with an estj and he was just very rugged and you know just the te hero like if it wasn't empirically studied it isn't true you know there's just so much more we don't know than we do know and people just won't accept that mostly censors you know they just think like well, if you can't see it it's not there it's not real you know right yeah yeah, that's that's the primary work I've been trying to like work on also recently, uh, trying to dive back into Kiersey's work and figure out like the language of the sensory and trying to figure out how it works um, just to, to be able to better, better type people. Because like my the way that I go about typing people whenever I'm uh, like watch people watching is I, I default to assume that they're a sensor and then I'm looking for the abstract language. Like the very, uh, they speak very an analogically. Uh, like we tend to speak a lot in, in analogies, and uh, there's other things I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But that's the kind of the stuff that I'm trying to like develop to figure out how to better assess the sensing versus the intuition. I don't know if you have any input on that. How to like differentiate them? Like, yeah, like how do, how you spot the the sensing versus the intuitive, ver and 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 watching for your own subjective uh, biases that are pot potentially pushing you towards one perspective or another uh you know i'm just always in my head with my ni so it's i'm just kind of in my own world and not always concerned about other people but i do try to seek out other intuitives uh here and there and you know i do find them like i said i have an intp coworker, which i i talk to sometimes um right 
But yeah, I mean, it's, so you don't you don't you don't spend too much time watching the for the sensor talk. Oh oh yeah, I mean it's yeah. everywhere. There's a ton of es. I work so, graveyard. So, gotcha. Okay. And there's a ton of ESTPs there. I mean, it's a very hands-on job being a behavioral health hospital, and you got to and they're very good. And actually, they're they're actually very good at talking people down too. But you know, it's kind of like I'm the sore thumb there, basically. I'm like you know, very likely the only INTJ there, which I am in most right. places where I go. So it's kind of hard. Right. But yeah, I can definitely tell like an intuitive when I do see them, but. They're usually, I think, you know, we're just so encouraged and we're kind of like stigma. It's almost like a stigma of being an intuitive. Like you can't really be yourself and like you have to act like a, a sensor basically. And that's kind of what I did for basically my twenties into my thirties. And I'm kind of like, I'm just going to be myself and people don't Everybody like else it. Be damned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the right attitude. I think that that's one of the benefits of getting into your thirties. Honestly, I'm looking forward to getting to that point. Cause I've been, I'm, I'm the same way, especially being an FE user. Uh, it t- tend to uh, to favor how everybody else wants to be versus being myself, which creates a lot of inner tur- uh, turmoil as well. Okay, the difference between envisioning NE and imagining NI according to BB. So I know I talked about, are you, you, you're talking quite a bit about the NE and NI on your uh, channel, the few videos that I did watch. <clears throat> and you kind of went off, like the definitions that I use in my video, like BB kind of sees it like, as what the person sees it and what the other people see it in kind of what the end result is but i think you kind of defined it a different way it's how i interpret it in his book um so envisioning was what is the end result of any and definition it's kind of the end result of what bb said is what ni is i know you didn't really like to put a woo woo thing into it but like i said psychology is very abstract and woo -woo in itself so i think right i think that's kind of like the spiritual element is the intuitive functions yeah, it's not so much to not put a woo woo term on it. I love the woo woo. It's more so the f- finding a better word because I feel like the div- divination, like for mo- most people, that's just like like what like w- what is divination? That's like I, they can link it to the divine, and it's just like a, a mir- something that's like a miracle. Uh, but I was trying to find a different word that like better better collected what it was that the ni is trying to embody. Uh, which I chose the word conceptualizing just because I noticed I was talking to my INTJ buddy at that time uh, who was using the word con- he, like in his in his vocabulary. The word conceptual conceptualizing came up a lot because that's what he was doing. He was always conceptualizing an idea and trying to formulate the 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 end product of whatever idea he was wrestling with at the time. Yeah, I think that's a good term as well. Uh, we really try to kind of look at the big picture and look at the why and we kind of try to conceptualize the why. But I think another big struggle with uh, being an NI Dom is to like you have this vision in your head that even other NI Doms can't see. And what I think what he meant by divination is uh, what BB meant by divination, I should say, is that what we kind of see in our heads. And I don't want to sound like pretentious or like godly or anything like that, but we our thoughts become reality, and we can make our thoughts reality. And I think that's why I like why NI Doms are kind of considered trailblazers a lot of times because we have these concepts in our mind and we make them into reality. If you know, well, I think NI Doms could be the most useful people or the most useless people, right? Depending on their maturity and their self value, I guess. Right. I think that's where BB got it from, but conceptualization is a good term as well. Okay. Yeah, so I I, I kind of get what you're saying because like I got my INTJ friend, she she does the same thing where she she believes heavily in manifesting because like anything that she's ever wanted, she kind of goes after it full throttle. And if she's if she's really if it's really tied into her value structure, she'll fuck it, she'll get it. Like there's there's kind of no stopping her uh, at the end of the day. So yeah, I'm yeah, very but, of that. I'm kind of the same way. If I want something, I have a hard time not stuff gets in my way. I usually get in my own way. I think really. Yeah. That's what manifestation. That's what I'm really trying to go into because instead of like working all day at work, all night at work, and coming here and working 30, 40 hours a week on this and right. being a parent and all that stuff, I'm just trying to kind of let life happen. I think that's what's good about being an any user, just kind of just go with the flow or an SE Dom or anything like that, SE hero. Right. Kind of let it happen to you instead of you trying to happen to life, I guess. Yeah, that's that's kind of like the extroverted perceiver's motto is uh, that in particular just letting we, we don't really plan our days very much uh like i woke up today like at at noon i think and that was just, I, I was like all right i'm gonna spend the day watching uh stranger things and i just started watching stranger things and then 
an hour before this podcast or this uh, interview, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to read a little bit on some of the, just like rehash some of the old stuff that I was uh, reading. Cause I haven't read his book in probably like four months, like three or four months at least, if not more. Um, and trying to like get that, that figure it out. But yeah, there's not, not a whole lot of planning goes. It's, it's usually uh, just let, letting life happen, like, letting life happen to you. Like you said, but it's, it's a double-edged sword. It's great. But like, it's also like, our destination is very, very unknown to us. We don't, we don't know where we're going to end up in a lot of ways, which is terrifying because my NI tends to scream at me in that way. My NI is like a fucking God raining hell on me whenever I don't do what I'm supposed to be doing. And the book that we keep referring to, this holy sacred book, is uh, John B. Oh, yeah, it's upside down. Energy pattern. <laughs> the, psychological the, pattern. The, the green on your screen is getting cut off because of the green screen. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. How would you define introspection? And how would you get someone to introspect without using Jungian legal? So, man, I think it's just, I forgot the quote. I'm pretty terrible at, uh, memorizing quotes. I, I'm a big lesson. Like not, I guess you've got to give credit where credit's due, but just kind of learn to learn a lesson from it. Like history and stuff. I think it's taught horribly in school. Right. Uh, but basically I think just anybody, you, even if you're an extrovert, I think that's the biggest struggle being an extrovert is you always got to be around people and you're afraid to be by yourself. Uh, but I think really just to find out who you are, you got to go deep inside and get away from people. Like if you even hear about like spiritual awakenings and this and that, right. you just want to cut people out and get rid of the trim, the fat basically. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, think I, I view it the opposite. So one of the, one of the things that I've, uh professed uh and i i made a post on my instagram a while back it was basically i'm going to paraphrase it but it was something along the lines of the greatest gift that the extrovert can give themselves is to spend time away from people to get clear on their identity because extroverts tend to have a very fuzzy especially if they don't have fi um to get away from people and that's something that i've done for myself is get away from everybody so i can get rid of like adam watts talks about this a lot like get away because people are constantly telling you who they think you should be and that's going to, as an FE user, it's going to very, very strongly muddy your own view of your identity. Um, and I guess that, that's kind of what you had said. Uh, you, you were saying for the introvert, the introvert should get away from people. Oh, I think anybody needs it at some point. Because I think, right. like like I said, there's a, almost like type dysphoria is what I like to call it. And, you know, yeah. like if you're an intuitive, you're kind of shunned from society, like, you know, with atheists and stuff. I think it's just as bad as being Christian or Muslim or whatever. I'm just against religion. Right. An ideology is an ideology, you know, I have my own ideologies and of course I'm a hypocrite. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you quit trying to be somebody that you're not basically and try to right. figure out who you are, I think is introspection, basically what people need to do. But right. of course, with someone in my situation, that can be very unhealthy and I do it in a very unhealthy amount. Right. I would say you, you would probably lean towards the other side of the spectrum where you do it you do it so naturally that getting around people is probably one of the, the antidotes that you need to, to counter that. Do you ever, do you not feel good at all? When like, if, do you ever hang around people where you're like, after you hang out, you're like, I feel good from, from this hangout session, even if it's only one person or not really, or is it usually almost always draining to you? It's almost always draining except like the very few people, like I can have a good conversation with right. like a, basically like an intuitive, uh, like I was doing, I haven't done it recently just because I just have no energy for some reason. I think a lot of yeah. it's astrological, but I do judo. And mm -hmm. of course that's dominated by artisans, SPs. And yeah, you know, when they have their own conversations, it's just like, I just, you know, it just doesn't click with me. Basically. It's just so concrete. And yeah, that's the biggest struggle I have when people ask me what I do. Honestly, like I, I went to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I was I, I took a couple of classes and I remember when I was having conversations with the guys afterwards, like I usually tend to steer to what towards whatever other people want to talk about, because whenever the conversation is turned toward like the spotlights turn towards me, I just fucking like it's hard to explain everything that we're doing with Young's work and like understanding the, the psyche um, without sounding like a, a complete nut job. <laughs> it's a uh, it's always a uh, fun in conversation. Yeah, how popular typology and MBTI is. Even I'm not a fan of MBTI. It's yeah, just same. like I cannot find any people in real life who are really into it. Like I went on a date with this. Yeah. I think she might be an INTJ too, mm -hmm. but she just automatically that must have been fun. <laughs> yeah. She just automatically dismissed me and said that she had an ex boyfriend, and that's all that he talked about. So automatically, mm -hmm. you know, she put me in this her own category, I guess. And yeah, 
I was done. That's unfortunate. But, I mean, maybe yeah. it's sort of the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, there is some uh, merit to compatibility and type. I think with your own type and with so your hard. dual type, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, <clears throat> shadow defenses within type. John Beebe's example of patients triggering their his own shadow defenses. What do you mean by that exactly? Yeah, so do you remember in the book uh, he was talking about the – what was it? I think he, he was a shoe, a shoe shiner. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Do you remember that story in the book? He, he was talking about there was a shoe shiner who he would go to periodically over the course of like 12 years. He was going all the time. And there's one day this one guy got really – um, this one guy came in and like operated outside of the realm of what like John BB's Effie child was uh, deeming like socially acceptable, and it really triggered him. And then the the shoe shiner who was an FI dom was uh, able to go in and kind of reorient the guy the guy that was acting like a schizophrenic, um, and he, it it taught BB about his own like knee jerk reaction to his own shadow defenses. And I was curious if you if you've done any any of your own like introspection on that. I like seeing what what where your your I guess we kind of discussed it a little bit with our the, the critic and the 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 Senex and the uh, trickster function. Um, I guess the only two we haven't talked about is the opposing personality and the demon the daemon. So what did he get triggered by? I remember the shoe shining shining story and how he he really admired was, his FI and how he took great pride in his job. I don't remember. I mean, I kind of remember about the schizophrenic guy, but he diffused him. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, the schizophrenic guy came up and was like asking him for change or something. Um, and he was disrupting his, the experience that he was having with, uh, with the uh, shoe shiner and the shoe shiner came in and apparently the shoe shiner knew the guy. I don't remember the specifics of the story, uh, just like a general overview of it. Um, and then eventually the, the shoe shiner went and like talked to the guy that was kind of, operating outside the bounds of what was socially acceptable uh and that him him as an fi dom doing that and being like that that source i guess of value i guess is one way to look at it was what uh gave him a lot of thought towards his own shadow defenses oh so he's kind of like uh it broke his comfort being out of his si child kind of like oh this crazy psychotic guy's bantering with this right. other guy or whatever and he kind of deemed him stupid because of his te trickster or te uh cynics is that what you kind of mean potentially like i said i don't, I don't remember the specifics of the story uh th th that was kind of like the, the gist of it I, I don't know if he i, I don't know if he th thought of him as stupid or if he had just written him off for some apparent reason my the best guess is probably that he thought he was like there was some crazy guy who just didn't know anything uh, like he's yeah. very quick to dismiss him and then the guy ended up turning out to be like a normal dude who was just like uh uh i don't remember what he was doing there. i can't remember if he was homeless uh yeah, yeah the, the specific I, the detail of the story i can't remember i vaguely remember the story uh yeah i just don't really get the context it's kind of this is a weird interview like i'm interviewing you with the questions that you ask me i don't know yeah i mean because the, the, these are questions that i wanted to ask you I, I, at least from when, when you with a document that you had sent me i thought you were asking me questions that i wanted to ask you just things okay. topics like i because like i had i had some of those written out from my talk with melissa too uh where different things that we can we can discuss that i that i was curious about with within her own typology journey and i was curious about yours as well just how you i'm always curious about how other people got into this stuff yeah, I don't think I have an answer to that question. That's probably something I'll have to think. That's of. fine. Yeah, just like I said, this stuff I just wrote like very quickly. It wasn't stuff that I, I put a lot of thought into. Okay, and complexes and their value within type. So I know like Jung talk, was the one that came up like a god complex and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his, his entire field was going to be called complex psychology because he saw so much value to understanding the complexes. And utilizing the uh, the the complexes in a therapeutic process, and figuring out because like BB talks about like the complexes with how it's a uh, it is in essence a hijacking of our conscious orientation, uh, and it's pushing it whenever it's our conscious energy or whatever you want to call it psychic energy gets pushed through the the through our unconscious functions create is where it creates the problems, and that's kind of where, where that's this is where I see the value in typology um, is finding where those the, the conscious energy is being pushed through the unconscious 
and then pointing it out to the individual so that the individual becomes more and more aware. And through repetition, the individual is able to uh, do that. The problem is that it's hard to do that. Uh, it's hard to find a good analyst that can do that very well because most people, most therapists I find are, are below uh, the standard that I would like to have in a therapist. Yeah, that's kind of like you mentioned Jung and like the kind of like cringe sort of thing, like the, yeah. the centers are trying to take out the intuitive side of psychology, even though it's purely intuitive in right. nature. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know a whole lot about complexes. I know about the God complex and. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you do. The eight functions, they, they, they attitudes are each a complex. So the heroes, are com you have the hero complex, you have the, the puer and the, and the puerta aternus is the, the child complex, mm -hmm. uh, the parent, com like the father and the mother complex. That's one that I fall into a lot. I, I, I have a lot of uh, father energy. Um, then like the inferior function, that's the, your, your anima, the, that's one complex in itself, the Senex and the, the other ones, Senex opposing, uh, Damon and the trickster. They're all different complexes that you can fall into. And they, they shape, there may be other complexes that also occur that we, we just haven't really put too much thought into in at, at least the, the entire community. Um, but that's what's occurring. You have your introverted feeling function, uh, or your, your conscious energy being pushed through your introverted feeling fa uh, value structure, which then creates um a an unconscious kickback through the individual that whatever experience they're having and like so one of the ideas i was wrestling to is like this idea of when you utilize one function so for you if you utilize an i there's going to be an unconscious any kickback that occurs i got that idea from marie louvon franz in her book on the inferior function whenever you use one function if you use the extroverted variant then the introverted variant is going to have some unconscious pullback that's going to occur either now or potentially at a later date um after the utilization of that function. So it's like the cognitive attitudes, the archetypal attitudes, the complexes are basically one and the same. Exactly. Yeah. So there really is only four. And then you're, when you use one, the other one's going to create some sort of problems for you. The sh like so if I use it, it yeah, good. It parallels with the shadow theory basically. Yeah. In essence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. Like, like I said, like when we're talking before the camera started rolling here, like starting this project, like we didn't got into Linda Barron's interaction style as much. INTJs along with ISTPs, ISTJs, and uh, one more INFJs. that I'm missing on INFJs. Yeah, we are yeah. see it through types and yeah. ENTPs, ESFPs, ESFJs, and ENFPs, ENFPs are yeah. get things going types. So one has a hard time finishing things, ENTP yeah. here, and one type has a thing hard time starting things. So yeah, I think how yeah, that but... can be for INTJs is. We have this NI vision of the one perfect way, but there's almost infinite possibilities. So yeah, all the sensory like, that gets in the way that you need to get through. We're afraid to start, and uh, it's hard to find that one path. We want to find the most efficient path, so we don't start at all. So that's that's kind of the challenge. And you, it's just hard to get grounded, right? Because you have all these possibilities. It's hard. It's hard to find the one path and keep going. Yeah, it's not hard to find the one path. It's that there's so many yeah. paths. It's like yeah. the the way that I described, I had this conversation yesterday with my friends because we went fishing. Um, they asked me like why I keep f dropping things. And I'm like, so the way that my brain works is that I am so hyper fixated on finding solutions that once I find a solution, it is no longer deemed viable because it is a solution that has worked in the past. I need to find a new solution and a new a new possible route forward. So it's like I'm just a, 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 a route finding machine, but then I never utilize the routes to benefit myself. That's kind of where my NI opposing personality comes in. And that's kind of where I where I need to utilize it in order to get a, a, a better grasp on my own future, which is so I'm so unconscious to it in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm kind of the opposite way. I'll try to find the best way and I'll tinker with it. And then once it's not broken, then why is it, what's the point of fixing it, basically? And kind of just stick yeah. to what you know. Yeah. It must be nice. <laughs> yeah, I but wish. then you miss out on a lot of other things too, I guess. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why they say like ENTPs or we tend to, we, we have a, a great start later on in life. Uh, once we actually, I mean, I think that's that's true for everybody uh, or not for everybody, for a lot of people. Uh, they, they, the, the, the latter half of their life is usually more filled with joy than the first half. Like the first half, the, the, the chaos of the inferior function gets hold of them in a lot of ways. Just because society is tailored for the majority and those that don't fit the, particular mode that you're supposed to fit into kind of fall by the wayside and then eventually they figure out a way hopefully yeah, survivor's what, bias potentially <laughs> as you put it life doesn't begin until 40 everything up till then is research so right like, i'm kind of starting to see that i think things are starting to finally come together for me 
after it's happy for you man that's that's good yeah it seems like you've had a a tough break with the personality the avoidance shit and now you're finally making strides for it slowly but surely yeah it's hopefully i get there and that kind of goes into another segue of the irrational types versus the rational types i hate the j and p and the and the myers briggs thing i think it's just terrible yeah. I think if it was to me, I would just throw away all the personality types and just stick to talking about functions. It makes it a lot easier for everybody. Because then I, I can't accuse you of not being an INTJ. I can just say that you're using FI. You're just oh, you're you're using your FI right now. Oh, you're using your NI right now. Oh, you're using your TE right now. It makes it a lot uh, less conflict. Yes and no. Like a lot of people, like will just argue that they're just using opposite function. It's just up for interpretation, but. Sadly, but people are going to argue anyways, so I guess yeah, you're right. <laughs> people at the end of the day, people people will people will argue that a tree is fucking blue. They, yeah. they they just argue for no fucking reason. Some people are just naturally argumentative as part of their character traits. Oh wait, I actually didn't see that. Oh, Flamo, an INTJ that I interviewed, he commented. I just saw it. He's oh, guess he? he's not watching anymore. Yeah. Uh, the first well, part think... of my life sucked. <laughs> yeah, he commented right now. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay, well, I hope he joins us again. Uh, yeah. It was one minute ago, so I'm sure he's still here. It says we have zero viewers, so... <laughs> oh, well, more people see it once it's published, I guess. Yeah. All right. All right, so we kind of got through your questions and we're an hour in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I thought I'd just go with the flow. Uh, so is there anything else you want to touch on? What is it like being like an any dom? I know you kind of went over it and, you know, you got to find a new solution for it different problem every time or the same problem every time what's like the biggest greatest thing the biggest pro and the biggest con basically biggest pro i'd say it's so enjoyable like i find myself doing stand-up routines in the shower randomly like i'll just have (laughs) i just for no apparent reason uh and that's really that's really enjoyable or like i'll be walking and then i'll have a random thought um sometimes they're a little dark uh i'll be honest mm-hmm. like i'll just rather be like oh like what if that car just rams that person and i just envision it happening in my head and i'm like that's a fucking dark thought but that'd be hilarious uh or the fact that it's occurring in my head is something mm-hmm. i find i find entertaining not that i would want to see that person get injured or anything um the con is just the the, the sensory that's attached to it uh organizing the because like i have such an addiction to to the novel uh that i really want to see these ideas come to fruition but then when you really sit down I'm so slow. Like I, th- I think I move at lightning speed because I can formulate the, the I can envision the 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 outcome, uh, but the actual process of doing the SI and organizing the sensory is like very very taxing on me. Uh, like my if I were to, I don't know if I should, but like my kitchen is right there and it's a fucking mess. Like I have dishes in the sink, I have everything. Just it's a lot of chaos. Is basically how I would say is the con of being a, an any dom. And also the 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 chaos associated with the daemon function, the se demon. Um, yeah, I get it. I, it's just funny. I laughed at the beginning because I interviewed this ENFP guy with a his INFJ girlfriend, and the first thing I asked him about being an any dom, he's like, "The beautiful thing is, I never get bored. Like, I will do stand up routines in the shower." <laughs> oh yeah, I, I watched that. Was a uh, fucking Francesca. Francesca and her boyfriend. I, I know Francesca from like when I first got into typology. Actually. Oh, you know them? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's actually, I remember watching that interview and I was laughing at too because I was like, I do the fucking same thing. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's funny. That a weird thing. Oh, Flamo's yeah. back. I guess we'll do a segment. I'm trying to do these live if the other person's willing to do so. And I guess if I have questions from the audience, do you have any uh, questions, Oh, Flamo? Any questions from the chat? We'll give them a second to type that and think it out. Yeah. And we'll go into. Uh, ti parent ti uh yeah ti mother father whatever you want to call it how does that yeah. kind of work for you um how does ti work for me uh just yeah. like my my obsession with developing understanding of things so i've always really found a lot of joy in 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 computers and understanding the way that systems work uh reading books and learning uh, about different ideas and and how other people were formulating said ideas um and yeah at its core it's just like i'm, I'm just fixated like my my little library is growing and that's been the only thing that's followed me throughout my like i've moved to three different cities and the only thing that ever follows like i sell everything except for my books i just keep my books and i take them with me so it's just an an obsession with learning i'm very very fixated on knowledge and being like a a grand wizard okay i think let me let me experiment with this This is the first time using Streamyard. okay oflamo asks why is both any and and i chaotic you have an answer to that your own perception um i would say any is chaotic mm-hmm. and ni is chaotic 
um, just because of the inherent lack of sensory, uh, which it, it's it's a there's a lot to unpack when I say that statement. Like the th there's a reason that Jung called the perceiving types the the irrational types. Um, both the the ni doms are envisioning the ideal path forward, but they because they are still movement types and they 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 do favor a lot of the uh this is from linda barons the the idea of like them just wanting to like make strides and make decisions to move forward they may skip out skip out on a lot of the sensory uh whereas for the ne dom for me it's an inherent lack of organization when moving forward uh so there may be things that i miss so like if i'm uh, starting a business, there will be some sort of bills that I don't pay that causes everything to shut down. That's in itself. So it's it's not so much what the N is doing, it's more so what the S is not doing, what the sensory is not doing, or what your consciousness isn't doing through the sensory. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of see it the same way. Like there's nothing really to grasp onto for the intuitive functions besides infinity itself. And, you know, there's... Right. And the universe is just chaotic as it is. And I think we kind of realize too, like you can't have any growth without change and change is chaos, chaos in itself. Right. And the only sure thing in life is change taxes and death. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, so we talked about TE, we talked about FE quite a bit. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about SI and fear. You want to touch more on that? Uh, yeah. So the, I guess I could quickly like one of the things that I got from reading uh, Man and His Symbols. Young talks about so the the idea behind sensory sensory at its core, what it's doing is it's telling you that something is there. Uh, then you have thinking; it's telling you what that thing is. Feeling is telling you whether or not that thing is agreeable, and then intuition is telling you what that thing comes from and where it's potentially going. So all the possibilities that it's kind of pulling forward. Uh, so with NE, the SI uh, in in a lot of ways is like my ability to be organized, my ability to even though this is a little bit of TE more than it is SI, like to 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 formulate the the conception. Like right now, I'm working on a typology course and figuring out the the best way to do that. Uh, but to sit down and actually like read and and organize my thoughts and organize the sensory <clears throat> is uh is very very difficult for me. And then just like day to day, the monotonous things, paying my bills, like I have. I have to renew my license and I'm probably going to end up not doing that. And my license is going to get expired. Uh, and then I'm gonna have to go through the whole fucking process of doing that. Um, and that, that sort of stuff, just the, the general day to day activities is, is usually what trips me up because I'll forget to do something uh, that's arguably not important to me, but important uh, uh, according to society. Okay. And if you have any more questions from the audience, just uh, chime them in. Thank you. Oflamo for participating. Um, we talked about uh, we talked about most of the shadow functions, but like you said, we really didn't hit the demon daemon function, the very last function. Yeah. And for you, that is a uh, se se uh, yeah. demon. So, yeah. what's that like in your experience? Um, it's where my vices lie. So I get a lot of uh, I have a or had I don't do it so much anymore. Uh, but I did have it, an addiction to like drugs, like uh, not have hardcore drugs, but like uh, I smoked a lot of weed when I was uh, younger. I quit that. Fortunately, I stopped smoking that. I got addicted to sex. Uh, and then that led into like me going out and like having sex with prostitutes, um, which was like not a, a smart decision at all. Um, and just like a lot of things when it comes to me doing the the sensory experiences, uh, it came out in a lot of negative ways because I just didn't give my brain the ability to actually go out and do it in a healthy way. I didn't have an outlet for SE. So because I didn't have an outlet for SE, it would come out in, in very toxic ways. So it was, you know, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll kind of lifestyle, like clubbing and going out and, and just living very unhealthy. Yeah, I know. I A lot of like uh, I, ENTPs, they really like the heroin. I don't know if you ever got into that. Like you said, you're into hard, hardcore drugs. but a Yeah, lot no, of I... I had people that I knew that did and it fucked their life up. So I tended to avoid it. Fortunately, I picked up on my mom's values. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. I think one good yeah. thing about being an intuitive over sensors that we can kind of see where our life's going to go. If we don't straighten our yeah. shit up or if we like, I even like considered hardcore drugs because I could just kind of see my own future and where that would lead. Yeah. 
And it's even for me, I can see uh, I'm constantly fixated on the external world. My intuition is applied externally. So I'm focused on where other people are going. And I was so I, I, I so clearly saw other people's lives being destroyed by this stuff that I was like, I'm going to fucking avoid it like the plague, uh, even though there is some inkling of curiosity around what it would feel like. All right. Well, I usually have a, some other last thing that I do, but I think I'm going to change it up a little bit. Do you have a favorite type? Um, INTJs. I'm biased, honestly. I love INTJs. Uh, the I I love the the how straightforward they can be at times. Like the the just all, all the direct types that 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 speak. Because like when I when I get around informative types, I get annoyed because I, I it's one of those things. You know, Young says like what 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 you find. What you, what you find discontent in, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but what you find discontent in is usually gold because it's kind of showing you yourself. Uh, so whenever I get around other informative types, I'm like, shut the hell up. Like I work IT, so they'll, they'll call me and like they just need me to reset their password. Or they're like, oh, hey, yeah. So yesterday I logged in and then I was cooking my casserole in the kitchen and I put it in the microwave and I was warming it up. And then when I went to log in, like, tell me what you need. And there's the direct types that call me like, yo, reset my password. I'm like, done. They're like, all right, bye. And they just hang up and I'm like, beautiful. I love those people. <laughs> but if I had to say INTJs in general, um, overall. Okay. A flame will comment. I just want to read real quick. Uh, nobody wants to sell hardcore drugs to me because they know I won't stay on them just because how I present myself. I'm not sure nice. exactly what you <laughs> mean by that exactly, but that's kind of an interesting statement. Um, do you have a least favorite type? Um, ENTPs. <laughs> why is that yeah i just it, especially if they're younger like if they're older i can look at it's, it's more like a mentoring relationship but like when they're younger i'm just like seeing all the chaos that i've gone through in my life and then i'm just seeing it repeated in them and i'm like i have i so clearly have the answer to what they're going through that i'm just like frustrated because like i know if they're me they're not going to listen to me so there's no way that i would be able to actually uh impart like their te critic is just going to fucking blow me into oblivion if i even try to 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 educate them on their on their type uh, and it's really frustrating. So there's a lot of, I guess that's kind of like where the idea of the shadow defenses come in, where I'm seeing my own shadow defenses come in whenever I interact with ENTPs in a lot of ways. Yeah, they can be the most open type with their any hero, but they can be very, very closed off with that TE cynics for sure. I'm just kind of dismissing yeah. other people's stupid in their way is the only way. Yeah, especially if they're in a very unhealthy and like uncomfortable state, which let's be honest, a lot of times they are. They don't they don't live the most vicar the most amazing lives. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, final question. I think I'm going to start asking people. Do you have three book recommendations? It doesn't have to be typology related. It could just be self development, it could be fiction, whatever. Um, looking through my list off the top of my head. So there's one that's like I, I tend to recommend to all men, uh, just because it really helps you with understanding uh, uh, most women. I would probably say most SJ women uh, is uh, "How to Be a Three Percent Man" by Corey Wayne. That's one. Um, John Beebe's book is like uh, a godsend, so I always recommend that one to people, that, especially people that are watching this are probably going to be interested in typology. Mm -hmm. And uh, my goal is always to have people be as educated as possible. So if they can read the books themselves and they can develop their own opinions about these subjects, even though maybe the TI tricksters probably will have a, <laughs> the most struggle with that. Um, that's a joke. Uh, I don't want to hate on ESFPs and ENFPs, <laughs> although it's like a half joke because it is kind of it is kind of there. Um, and trying to think what's another really good book Ke probably king warrior magician lover i don't know if you've ever read that book yeah, uh yeah. king or the yeah, the king warrior magician lover series is a really really good series for for men uh to to kind of figure out the different car archetypes and how they're playing out in themselves because a lot of guys when they're younger tend to focus way too much on the lover archetype and they don't put enough emphasis on the other ones although i think nts generally put a lot more emphasis into the wizard archetype um to the magician archetype just because we we favor knowledge so much more than than everything else um so I, it's one of those things where you know you gotta play it by ear and figure out what what archetypes you yourself are putting more attention into okay very cool i, I, I don't know if that was two, that, that was three yeah that was three <laughs> yeah i read that one but i haven't read the others in the series uh maybe i'll get around to it eventually they're expensive bro they're fucking ex like the the warrior because it, it it breaks down into like the king archetype the, the, like separately the king the warrior the magician and the lover uh and i think i i found the the king the the warrior and the magician the warrior i think was like 120 the magician was like 70 and then the king was like 50 so they're they're pretty pricey books. Why is that? Have, they're out of print, or I think they're out of print. Yeah, 
they're not even that old. They're written in the nineties. Yeah, they're not. Some people, but yeah. All right, I think that's all that I have. I definitely want to talk more about uh, relationships and masculinity and femininity, but I think maybe we can uh, do a continuation of this someday. Maybe. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'll be down. Do you have any closing thoughts? Um, no, just uh, please become educated, guys. That's, that's my closing statement. <laughs> become yeah, smart. Ed- education is good, and not a formal education in school necessarily, but. Yeah, no. Unfortunately, not. Every- I don't think everybody can be autodidact. So for some people, that that process is required but good luck to them i'm glad it's not me <laughs> that's yeah. all i'll say yeah we definitely need uh engineers and doctors and i guess that should be regulated in many ways yeah all right well uh if you like gabriel you can check him out on we are Jungians. he has his own uh, youtube channel and also a website i'll get those links from him and put it down below in the description uh you could also Appreciate check it. out this i do have it on major po- podcasting platforms such as uh spotify and i believe it's on apple music and uh google Podcasts and all that good stuff i'll put it on there shortly uh thank you for going beyond a clickbait sorry for the long hiatus again and thank you for being patient with me uh, have a great day see you guys <laughs>